Hi, I'm Rick Langford. We're in the installation shop at Pier Sales and we're today installing a five-ton dump kit on a new Chevrolet cabin chassis. This is a 60-inch cab to axle. It's a very standard installation and it's a perfect truck for the five-ton dump kit. Uh, we have a bed ordered for this truck, it's special built. It's going to be 10 feet long. Normally, a truck this length, you would use a 9-foot bed, but due to extra space needed for the rear hinges in the dump kit, it's going to be a foot longer. We've taken the tail lights off of this chassis and looked at the rear of the truck, and we have determined that we want to cut this chassis off just a little bit. We do like to shorten the chassis as much as possible because we want as much overhang as we can get on the bed. The more overhang past the hinges uh, gives a counter lever effect and it makes in essence the dump kit stronger. We've determined we're going to cut the frame up close to the rearmost cross member and there is space to slide the hinge the frame hinge in a slot between the outer frame and the cross member. We're going to cut this frame at a 45 degree angle so that we have pin clearance above the cut yet we still have metal to weld or bolt the frame hinge to the truck chassis frame. We don't have a problem welding at the rear of a chassis frame. We do not weld anywhere forward of the rear frame hanger. In order to keep uh, crack from developing in the frame and possible weak spots from the welding process. In front of this frame hanger will be bolted to the chassis. Now that we've determined the location of the rear hinge pins, we can get an accurate measurement on where to place the scissor assembly on the front of the chassis. According to the directions, we have a range of 5 foot 8 inches to 6 foot 6 inches from the rear hinge to the pivot point in the scissor assembly on the lower frame bracket. We determine, due to clearance issues with the front fuel tank filler hose, we need to be behind that. We also had to determine how to fasten the L brackets that the scissor assembly will be connected to, to the frame. Those have to be bolted. On this particular installation, there is an overload spring perch that's bolted to the frame. We determined we can use the same bolt holes by transposing them onto our bracket, sandwich them together, put longer bolts, bolt it onto the frame using the existing spring perch. That will put the center of our low, our uh, scissor assembly bracket, the frame bracket, right at 5 foot 11 and a half inches, which is towards the rear of our parameters, which will give us a little bit more lift height and a little bit less capacity. Everything's give and take when it comes to lift height versus capacity, but a 5 ton unit on a short cabin chassis such as this going to give uh, very satisfactory results. As I mentioned earlier, one thing that must be considered in this application is the thickness of the fuel filler hose. This is a Chevrolet installation. If it were a Ford or a Dodge, the fuel filler hose enters the fuel tank through an opening in the frame, and it does not have to be considered. You can lower the bed stringer as low as possible to get the bed height as low as possible. This particular installation, we could go as low as three quarters of an inch. However, it wouldn't allow room for the hose to remain open and fuel to pass through and fill the fuel tanks with the bed in its lowered position. That being said, we have to determine that height before we mount the rear frame hinge. We'll begin that process now. This is the rear frame hinge. This is a rear seal hinge. This is going to be a rear hinge pin. And they'll be assembled in this manner after we install the frame bracket 
or the rear frame hinge to the rear frame. Well, what we had to determine before we went any farther, we determined that a two inch space between the rear seal hinge and the frame would be approximately enough to give us full diameter of the fuel fill hose, which is going to be located on the other side, to go between the bed seal or the main runner and the chassis frame. This cross member it becomes extra long in the kit because we don't ever know exactly what frame width the customer is going to be dealing with. This particular truck is a standard cabin chassis and it has a 34 inch frame width. In order to keep them welded on the truck frame, as I mentioned earlier, we've added our L bracket behind the spring perch in order to attach the cross member to the L bracket. We will cut the cross member at the appropriate length to allow us enough room to run a bead and weld the cross member to the L bracket, which in the end leaves the unit bolted to the truck frame through original bolt holes with no damage to the chassis or no compromise to its capacity. If we use the stock location, we're not going to have enough distance between the frame of the chassis and the seal. There are several different ways to take care of this problem. You can add a spacer underneath the cross member. You can add a spacer in between the seal support and the cross member. But we like to have the, chassis, the scissor assembly in a fully retracted position whenever it's in its full down position in order to gain the use of the full stroke of the scissor assembly. This particular application, we've determined to make some alterations. We've trimmed the seal support to fit inside the bed main runner. We'll attach in this manner. This should give us approximately the same distance, two and a half inches, that we had at the rear. We know our bed will be made with a four inch seal and a three inch cross member, the deck setting on that. That gives us seven inches of space to work with underneath the deck of the bed to the bottom of the seal. In this particular installation, we know we're going to raise it up at least two inches above the chassis. Now, actually, right at two and a half inches by adding a spacer at the rear hinges. That gives us an overall height between nine and a half and ten inches. We take the straight edge and run across the top of our scissor assembly and we see by measuring to the chassis frame, we're going to be in the area of nine inches overall height. So we have plenty of room to work with. One half to one inch clearance between the vent and the deck. This space can be changed by raising and lowering the bed. It also can be changed by raising and lowering the scissor assembly. You can make the bed lower by lowering the scissor assembly in between the frame rails. This particular application has a fuel tank in the way, a plastic fuel tank inside the frame, and this is the lowest position that the scissor assembly can be installed.